This is part 66 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to suggest an available unique username using ASP.NET Web Services and jQuery Ajax. We'll be working with the same example that we worked with in part 65, so please watch part 65 before proceeding. Here is what we want to achieve. When we create a Gmail account, we will have to provide a username. Let's enter email to Sarah as the username. And look at this, when the text box loses focus, we get a validation message. Someone already has that username. Try another. And then it displays an available unique username. So it says email to Sarah9 is available. And look at how they have computed this available username. To the username that we have entered within this username text box, they have appended a random number. In this case, number 9. Look at this. When the text box loses focus again, this time they have appended 382 to this username that we have entered right and this available username is a hyperlink so when I click on this available username look at what happens that username is populated in the username text box and all the messages goes away so let's see how to achieve this using ASP.NET Web Services and jQuery Ajax and here is the example that we worked with in the previous video session at the moment when we type a username if that username is available it says it's available if it's not available we know that Pamela is already present in the database and in use so it says Pamela already in use so if the username is is in use then let's see how to suggest a unique username that's available okay just like Gmail so let's flip to Visual Studio. The first thing that we are going to do is change this ASP.NET Web Service method. So at the moment we have got this username exists function which is writing this registration object to the um, current response stream. Okay, we discussed this function in detail in the previous video session, so I'm not going to go over it. I'm going to change this function. So at the moment the return type is void. I'm actually going to change it to Boolean and I don't require this private variable so I'm going to get rid of that from there and I want this function to return true or false. It's going to return true if the username is already taken um, otherwise it returns false. Okay so here we're retrieving you know from the DB whether if the username is available or not and we are going to return that boolean value back. Okay and we don't require all this code so I'm going to delete all this code okay now this function username exists this simply returns true or false if the username is in use then it returns true otherwise if it's available it's going to return false okay now I'm going to create another web method so let's actually copy these lines and paste here and let's change the name of the function to get available username okay and let's change the return type to void and now the first thing that I'm going to do here is create an instance of registration class and let's call this registration equals new registration now first we are going to assume that the username is not in use so I'm going to set this property username in use to false okay and then I'm going to use a while loop here and call this function username exists this function returns true or false so I'm going to call this function username exists while username exists and to this function we need to pass the username that the user has typed into the text box and we have a parameter coming into this function so I'm going to pass that username okay so now what is this function going to do this function will return true if the username is already in use if the username is already in use then what we want to do we want to compute a random number append that to the username that the user has typed in the text box right so to compute the random number I'm going to use a random class and let's call it random equals new random and I'm going to create a variable of type integer let's call it random number equals we are going to use the random object and on that let's go ahead and call the next function and I'm going to use this overloaded version where we can specify a minimum and maximum value 
So I want a random number to be generated between 1 and 100. So that's what these two parameters specify. So we have a random number now. All that is left is to append that to our username. So username equals username plus random number. And I'm going to convert that to a string. Okay. Now, when is this going to come into this block? It will come into this block if the username exists function returns true. If the username exists function returns true, what does that mean? That username is already in use and that's the reason why we are computing um, a new username by appending a random number. Okay, so that's the reason I'm going to set username in use property to true. So basically this tells us that the username that the user has entered on the UI is in use and we are computing a new username by appending a random number. Okay. Now once it comes out of this while loop, that means we have identified a username that is available for use and I'm going to store that in the registration object. So registration object has got username property as well and I'm going to set that to whatever username is available. So let's quickly understand this code. Now let's say for example on the UI we type Pamela. We know Pamela username is already in use. It's a, it exists in our database. So we pass that whatever you have typed that is Pamela in this case to this function and it comes here it initially sets username in use property of the registration object to false and it comes to this function. So Pamela is passed to username exists. What is this function going to do? It's going to return true because that username already exists in the database. It's already in use. And if this function returns true, then it's going to get into this while loop, create a random object. And you know we are generating a random number between 1 and 100. And to that username Pamela, we are appending random number. Let's say we have generated a random number of 5. So the username now will be Pamela5. And you know the username initially we have provided is in use. That's why we are setting this property username in use to true. Okay, and then it goes back to the while loop again because this returned true. So now when it comes, username contains Pamela five, and that's what will be checked against the database. In the database, we don't have Pamela five. So what is this function going to do? It's going to return false. When it returns false, what is it going to do? It's going to break that while loop and it comes here and it sets that username uh, you know, as the value for username property of the registration object. So username of uh, the registration object contains Pamela 5. Okay, So all that is left now is to serialize this registration object and write it to the response stream. So to serialize it to the JSON object, I'm going to use JavaScript serializer and let's call the serialize function and pass the registration object. And let's write that serialized string to the current context. So context.response.write. All right. So let's go ahead and build this solution. And let's view this web service in the browser. So now this web service should actually be exposing two functions. Now we don't really need to call this username exists function. So there is no need to expose this as a web method. So what I'm going to do is actually get rid of web method attribute from that function. Save the changes. Build the solution. Let's go ahead and reload this. So now we should have only get available username. Let's click that. Now let's type mark for example. So we don't have such a user in the DB. So when we click invoke, look at that, username in use, mark is not in use. So that's why it's returning false. And you know, that's the username that we have entered in this case. So it returns that. But we know Pamela username is in use. So when I type, look at that, Pamela and invoke this, look at what we get back. Username in use? Yes, Pamela username is already in use. So it has computed a unique username that's available, in this case Pamela 4. Look at the random number it has appended is 4 and it returned that. Okay. So now all that is left is to actually call this web service method from the UI okay, using jQuery code. So let's go ahead and do that. So now here next to the div element, I'm going to include a span element. Let's give the span element an ID. I'm going to call this 
span available username and I'm going to create a link element as well you know I hyperlink element so anchor and let's actually call this link available username and let's set the href attribute to hash so when you click on the hyperlink it actually takes you nowhere we just want to make that available username clickable so you may be wondering why do we added these two elements the reason is if you look at you know gmail right here notice that you know we have the validation message and then we have this text available and then the email that is available so we will be displaying this text available within the span element and this username that's available within that anchor element that's the reason why we have added those two okay so now let's go to jquery code so now the function within the web service that we want to call is get available username so let's copy this function name and specify that right here okay and we want to issue a post request the data that we want to send to the user uh, I mean to the web service is the username that the user has typed on the UI and the type of data that we are expecting from the server is JSON data and when the request completes successfully this is the callback function that we want to call and the registration object will be passed to this data object so this data object is going to contain username in use and username properties okay so if username in use if this property returns true what does that mean whatever we have typed into the username text box initially that username is in use so that means we would have computed you know a unique username that's available and the username property of the data object will contain that available username so at that point you know we want to say username already in use just like Gmail try another and uh, let's put a question mark okay and then within the span element we want to display that word available and notice here we, have, we are storing the reference of development within this variable similarly let's store the reference of span element and the anchor element and if you look at the ID of the span element it is span available username so let's find that and let's actually call that span element and the ID of the link element is link available username and let's call this link element okay so if the username is already in use we want to display that validation message and within the span element so we have span element dot text so the text that we want to display within that span element is available and a colon symbol and then we have the link element within the link element what we want to display we want to display the available username okay and where do we get the user available username from from the username property of the data object that this callback function is receiving okay so that's what we should do if the username that we have provided is already in use it's going to come to this else block if the username that we have provided is available right so at that point if we are already displaying anything within the div I mean within the span and link elements what do we want to do we want to empty that so I'm going to actually copy and paste those two lines here and empty the text that is displayed within the span element and within the hyperlink element okay so let's go ahead and save the changes let's reload our HTML page and look at this when I type Pam so this username is available so it displays the message as usual and Pamela look at that it says Pamela 74 already in use try another and available Pamela 74 now this error message here is mis uh, misleading because Pamela 74 is the username that's available right this is not the username that we have typed here so basically it should say Pamela already in use try another right the reason why it is showing here the available unique username is because we're using the username property of the data object now to get the username that the user has typed in the text box use this variable 
right? Because that's what is receiving the value that the user has typed in the text box. So let's copy that and paste it right here. So save the changes. Let's reload this page. Now it should say whatever we have typed into the text box. So Pamela already in use, try another. Pamela 98 is available and this is a hyperlink. Now when I click on this, we should actually populate that within this text box and we should clear out these messages from here. Okay, basically div element, span element and the link element. We should empty everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So here we are setting the text for the hyperlink element and I'm also going to chain the click event handler function. So when we click the hyperlink, we want to execute some code which is going to be part of this anonymous function. So what do we want to do at that point? When we click on this hyperlink, we want to store that username in that username text box. And here we already have the username text box selector. So let's copy that and I'm going to say that username dot val so the value of that is going to come from dollar this dot text. So what is this what is this code doing here? What does this keyword refer to here? Now we are within the context of the hyperlink element. So this keyword references the hyperlink element and we are calling the text property. So we will retrieve the username that's available and we are going to store that in this username text box right and once we are done that what we need to do we need to empty out the div element span element and the link element itself so I'm actually going to yeah so div element dot text let's empty that similarly span element and hyperlink element okay all right, so let's go ahead and save those changes as well. Reload this page and let's type. So Pam is available and Pamela already in use. Try another Pamela 56 and look at that. When I click on that, we have that stored there in the text box and all the validation messages are gone. Thank you for listening and have a great day.